uh, there is a problem with the sound or, or the video, just let me know and I'll switch uh, as switch uh, spot in uh, in the house, but we should be uh, we should be OK. Um, so last uh, week was uh, uh, the first lab, which you guys are still uh, fighting with. Actually, the point of that lab was just to uh, to have you guys play with the platform. When you start with a new programming language and with a new uh, development environment, um, it's not so much that the language is hard, but sometimes it's just where to click to have that effect or to find that option. So. Um, uh, the code that you have to write is pretty similar to what I did in the, the demonstration video or in class, but I left out um, some little details like how to change the color uh, of the, the, the background of the reactivity, how to change the, the size of the text, because I want you guys to look through the properties and, and explore basically. Um, the way I work usually, uh, like I said in class, I have these little labs that have you practice. Um, and once we give the solution for that lab, then uh, you have a lab for which you're going to be uh, evaluated on. So the little form that you have to 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 implement with your uh, your basically income, your expenses that that little uh, form. Actually, I'm I'm gonna do either uh, tonight or tomorrow um, uh, a video that's gonna be on my uh, YouTube channel of me coding the whole thing step by step, right? Because uh, that's how I'm gonna be giving you guys the solution of these exercises. But the the uh, labs that you're gonna be evaluated on for those, I won't be giving out the solution. I would. I will get your code. Uh, I will go through your code and give you individual feedback. Okay, that that's how I work usually uh, in most of my programming classes. Uh, so for today, I want to go a bit further in the in, uh, in in what we have to learn this semester. So far, we're able to create an application with one activity. So everything happens in the same user interface. But in many programming language, whether it's a web application, a mobile application, a desktop application, well, your application can and will have many different windows. So how in Android can we launch a second window from the first one? How can we uh, launch a second window and in the same time, pass information to the second window to display that information in the second window. How can we um, pass object for one window from one window to another one? How can you we pass information to a second window, make a calculation in that second window and have uh, the second window sent back the result to the first window. So these are the topics that I want to try to cover um, today. If I don't go through all of them, well, I take a bit of time in the beginning of the Wednesday class to uh, go through the rest of the of the demo. There is already a video going over this subject, but uh, they're in French on my uh, on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to make I'm going to make this one live with you guys. Good. So that's my that's my plan for today. Everybody's okay with that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. So let me share my screen. There you go. Um, okay. So I'm gonna create a new folder right here. So dem demo and tent, and let me put ENG for English. So uh, an tent. Is the is the mechanism that is used in uh, in Android to uh, to ask something to the to the OS to the operating system? It's a type of it's a type of class. It's a type of object. So your application uses an intent uh, to ask the the to uh, declare its intention to the operating system, and then the operating system respond, uh, granting uh, whatever the application asks or refusing whatever the application asks. So I'm going to create a new project right here. I'm going to still go with an empty activity for now. So demo intent. I'm going to put it in 
the folder I just created on my desktop. Where is it? Um, demo intent. Okay. And we're sticking we're sticking with Java for the whole semester. So Java, and like I said, um, some of you have more space, more space. So if you have you have different version of the uh, the OS. For myself, I have version 10 because that's what's running on my physical phone also. So the project I'm doing right now, if I compress it after the class and I put it on Teams, those of you who have version 10 will be able to run it. Those of you who have version of the OS 110 won't be able to run it, which is not really a problem because uh, you will still be able to open it in the file manager and copy uh, whatever code I wrote in the classes or import the classes in your own uh, uh, project and, and then recompile it and run it. I'll show you how to do that. But basically, I'll, I'll just start my project. So finish. Um, yeah, like I said uh, in like I said last uh, last week, uh, Android projects are, are are pretty good, are pretty big. So some of your uh, some of your uh, uh, computers, uh, if they lack memory, it might be a bit hard on them to uh, to uh, simulate a full Android phone. So those in that situation, um, if you have a uh, old or new Android tablet or phone, just to let me know. I'll try to help you and show you how to send your code in a real device. I know that there is also uh, Ateca in the, um, the Magazin Scholar right next to uh, to the administration office. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a possibility for you guys to rent uh, some tablets. I, I think we have six or, or seven of them uh, at school. So I have my project that's created with a default activity, a default activity, sorry, which we're seeing here on the screen and a default layout, right? Um, just like I showed you in class, I'm going to change the, la the layout here to uh, a relative layout because uh, it's easier for us to work with a relative layout than with a constraint layout. Um, I've discussed this with a couple of you guys. There is a lot of different layout manager that exists in Android. Constraint layout, relative layout, linear layout, um, box layout, grid layout, bag layout. We're going to have uh, in a couple of weeks a class devoted totally to that subject. For now, let's just uh, get used to linear layout. It's a pretty simple one to use, um, and we need to start somewhere anyways. So um, let me okay, let me get rid of the text view right here, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the uh, layout linear layout vertical. So I'm gonna drop this right here. Go back to code view. Perfect. And in that layout, I'm going to quickly put a needed text and a button. So edit text. Here we go. So uh, wrap content, wrap content. So it's going to be as big as the text within it. Uh, I'm going to add Android. Android. Uh, I'm going to add an ID because I want to be able to get the text that I'm going to be writing into that edit text. I'm going to call it TXT uh, val. And let me close this. Uh, yeah, let me add an int. Going a bit fast for that part because I think these are properties that you guys already know from the the other demos that we did in class and from the introduction document. Uh, val value to send to the 
next the next page. So you see my intention right here. So I'm going to have a user interface in which we're going to write uh, something in uh, in uh, edit text. We're going to have a button on which we're going to press. And when we press that button, we're going to get whatever I've written in the edit text and send it to uh, a new page. OK, so let me create my button. So just be careful. I'm I'm hearing somebody's um, somebody mics. Just turn the mic uh, unless you have a, a question to ask. Uh, turn the mic off unless you have a question to ask. So wrap content, wrap content right here. My and draw id. Uh, let's give an ID again. Let's call it BTN um, send. Oops. So. Okay. Sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, hi. How we can uh, put liner li layout? Can you show me again? Sorry. Okay, okay let, let me let just finish, finish this line okay. and, I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll put another put one just to see my straight straight. So, so. Here, here, this is, and I'm and gonna, gonna call this is just, just uh, um, uh, your mic, mic your mic microphone, mic. please. please. Okay, okay. So, BTN send that's for the button. Let me close this and let me also give a have an ID. Let me give a text and throw it that. Text and the text is going to be sent. So um, I've showed you how to uh, register to the click event of the button using the the unclick attribute here in XML. I'm going to do it a different way uh, uh, today using uh, the ID that's right here. So I'm going to go in my activity and. Uh, let me just create references for for these two uh, components. So here, private edit text. Let's call it txt and private button. Let's call it btn. And right here. So this that. XT. I like to use this because that way I'm sure I I uh, I don't I don't misspell whatever I wrote as uh, the way I wrote my variable, so, and I can use auto completion equals. This is going to be a needed text, and we're using find view. And you by ID with R dot ID dot takes the val. So that's for the first one. Let's do the second one quickly, which is my button. There you go. Dot TN. Here we're going to have a button. And here dot BTN. BTN send. Okay, so I have references to uh, every graphical component in my layout. Now I want to register to the click event of my button. And this is going to look a lot like uh, JavaScript where you do add event uh, listener. So I'm going to do this dot BTN dot set on click listener. And I'm going to do a new unclick listener. Oops. So the code that's generated here um, contains a method, a method, a function that's going to be sent whenever I click on the button right here. Uh, there's a lot of oriented programming concept right here. Uh, there's um, inheritance, uh, which you saw. 
um, last uh, semester, which you should have seen last semester uh, in C-sharp. There is also um, implementing an interface, which is also a concept that you should, should have seen last semester. So I'm just going to write the code today and explain it uh, on a surface level. And then uh, in uh, maybe uh, Wednesday or next week, we'll dive back into the or object oriented concept, concept to make sure uh, inheritance, uh, uh, interface, um, polymorphism, all these words, you really know what they mean and you'd know how to code them in C sharp, but also in Java because they're pretty similar languages. So basically right now what's going to happen, whenever I'm going to click on the button, uh, I want to execute some code that I'm going to put here. But before doing that, I want to make sure that my button, it's the, the click event of my button is correctly register. I want to make sure that my compiler gets here when I click on the button. So, um, um, OK, in um, JavaScript, in JavaScript, you guys used to uh, use the alert method, right, to um, to display messages uh, in the in the web browser, right? You guys know about yes, the right. alert function in JavaScript. Yeah. So we have yes. something we have something similar here in Android. It's called a, a log, a log cat. So you can do this uh, log that E is for information, uh, D is for debugging, E is for er error. Um, so I'm just going to go with the first one. You put here a, a tag a tag that's going to enable you to filter through the different log that you want the application to generate. So let's just write test for now. And then I'm going to put here the value that I want to have shown in the log. Uh, let me put the demo. So right now, what's going to happen? You see here, I have a, a window that's called the log cat. So if I come here, and I write test. Well, every uh, every everything that's associated with the tag test, every message is gonna display right here. So if demo displays right here in a few seconds, I'll be sure that my compiler really hit this spot whenever I press the click button. Uh, it's also going to enable me to show you a concept, the breakpoint concept. So what I just did, look here on line 26, I just clicked once on line 26 and I have a, a red dot that appeared right there. It means that when I'm going to start my application and click on the button, instead of executing this one shot, the compiler is going to break, it's going to stop at this line. So look at what's going to happen. I'm just going to write test here, press enter, and launch my application. Not with the play button, but with the debug button right here. So it's compiling. Let's wait a few seconds. So I'm going to do a lot of uh, Android videos for you this semester. Unfortunately, I won't have time to do C sharp videos for you. But like I said, there's a lot of them on my channel in French um, covering all these concepts in, in .NET development. So those of you who, who manage French or understand French, uh, I'm still going to give you the link because uh, they're, uh, they're very important concept for you guys. So let's give it a bit of time. There you go, my application. OK, so here's my application. So right now I can write whatever I want here. Uh, it's not it's not used, right? So I'm just going to press the send button and look what's going to happen here in my application. I press send and you see test, which is the tag and then demo, which is the message. And let me put my breakpoint again and Actually, let me put other breakpoints so you can see what's happening. Because the first thing that's called when you launch a Android application is the uncreate method, right? So my application is going to break here first. 
So let me stop and relaunch. Breakpoints are really uh, useful tools to debug an application. OK, so you see what happened? The by default, the compiler um, um, basically stop at line 20, and that's why you see the background here as uh, being blue. It's saying that I'm stuck right there. And if you look here in the debug window, I can step over a line of code or step into, so execute my program line by line. Look at this. See, so I just called uh, a Java function. Actually, I'm going to stop it and rerun it because I didn't want to get into the 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 um, the native Java function. I'm just going to step over because when I when I press step into, it's going to go into the find view by ID and execute the code in that function line by line. We don't need to know uh, what's the code in there. We just need to know that it returns a reference to our edit text, all right? So that's where I'm going to step over it. So whenever you want to see the detail of a function implementation, you do step into. When you just want to step over it, jump over it, you do, you do step over. That's clear for everyone? Yes. Sorry, can you repeat that? Okay. If you want to see what's happening line by line inside of a function, you want to go into it. So you do step into. If you just want to jump over the line, execute it, but without knowing exactly what's happening in it, you step over it. Good? Oh, all right. Thank okay. you. Okay. So here, I don't need to know what somebody uh, uh, in the team that created the Android Studio wrote as code inside the find by ID function. I just need to know that if I call that function, it's going to return a reference to whichever component I'm pointing to. So um, step over, step over, and OK, my, uh, my user interface uh, um, My user interface, you see, there's a there's a lot of code that's running under the under the background for us. So if we want to get out of that, I'm going to do step out and I should have. Oh, come on. I'm going to do this until I have. There you go. I have my user interface. All this code, I didn't write it. It's code that's generated by Android. Right, but if I press on my send button now, look where it brings me. It brings me inside my um, click listener, inside the function that's supposed to react to the click of the mouse on the button that's referenced into this variable. You can use a breakpoint uh, even if you uh, you use the unclick tag in the layout. And at this point, what's going to ha happen? If I go step over again, this line is being executed. So in my log, well, I see the tag here and the value associated with the tag. So I'm sure that whenever I click the button, at least I get into this function right here. Good. So next thing we want to do, we want to add here the code um to launch a second activity so once i click on the button i want a second activity to pop up once that done we'll see how we can send information to that second activity so how to create a second activity i'm just going to come here uh, on my on the package of my project new i can create new class i can create a lot of things i'm going to come here in activity and I have templates for different type of activity. Let's go with an empty activity again. And by default, it's called main activity two. And if you leave it like that, the layout file associated with that activity is gonna be activity underscore main two, because the first one was called main activity and the layout activity underscore main. 
Do you see the pattern right here? So yes. that's the name of your class by default, and that's the name of the layout by default. You can change if, if you change it if you want to. Uh, let's call it test um, activity. And by default, it gives you a layout name, which you can also change. But usually, if you if you give a sensible name here, while well, there's the the name of the layout is going to be sensible too. So I press finish. And now I have my first activity, the one we were working on. I have my second activity, which has exactly the same thing as uh, the first empty one that we had. And we have a layout, another layout file, which uh, uh, has nothing by default. So what I'm going to do here in this second activity, I'm going to again put a relative layout and just to differentiate the two activity in the second one i'm gonna come and i'm gonna add a text view because my story was i wanted to pick up the text from the first one and display it from the first activity and display it in the second activity so i don't need a, an edit text because i don't want to I don't want to be able to uh, override the information i just want to be able to display it and I'm going to put an ID. And ID. Let's call it LBL because uh, text view is like a label, uh, label val. And you know what? Let's put uh, some default text in it uh, for now. Since we're not sending anything yet, Let's put some default text and grid that um, text. Um, result here. OK, so I have a second activity. Now let's see what needs to be done to launch a second activity from uh, uh, a primary activity. So we need a new type of object. That object is called uh, an intent and it's in the package android content so if i click on that the package has been imported for me all right it's right here uh, so let's go i'm gonna call and then create an intent variable so new um, intent and that class has many constructor right so i'm gonna um show the one we need for today uh an intent needs a reference of the activity that's a sending that intent to the operating system and then it needs the name of the resource it's asking um it's asking permission uh to have uh, from the operating system so i'm main activity and I'm asking for test activity. So I'm going to do this. Uh, actually, the better way to do this is to say get application context. Application context is a reference to the current activity. And here um, I need to put the name of the activity I'm targeting, which is test activity. So um, this is how you do that. Test activity dot class. So an intent, it's like an envelope in which you, on which you put your address. I'm the one sending the message to the OS. And when the OS gets that envelope, it opens it and sees to whom it is addressed. And if you have the right to uh, to get that resource, well, the OS opens up that resource for you. And how do we send the envelope once it's created and filled with whatever we want to ask for? We use start activity, which receive what? Which receive our uh, which receive our intent. 
So I'm going to get rid of the breakpoint for now and uh, just launch the activity uh, the usual way. So you can see the final result and then I'm going to launch it again, but in debug mode so we can go uh, line by line. OK, so my phone is right here. So again, I'm not uh, I'm not um, worried about the text for now, right? We haven't written any code for that. So if I press on my button, look what's going to happen. Right now it's a demo intent, right? So it's the it's the it's the name of it's the general name of our application, and we're activity we are in activity one. You recognize the user interface of activity one, the the layout that's right here that we did before. So. Um, if I press on my send button, look what happened. Uh, it's a bit small, but right here, I, do, I don't know if you guys can see, result here. So we really launched the second activity. Everybody see what saw what happened? Yes. OK, so now yes. let's let's go uh, with the uh, breakpoints to make sure that this code is really what's making all of this happen. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and I'm going to launch in debug mode again. So notice that right now I have a breakpoint. It's pink, right? Whenever the compiler breaks on the line where there's a breakpoint, uh, it becomes um, blue to tell you that this is where I'm stuck right now, and I need you to either go uh, to either step into each line or step over a line. So if I press, boom, I'm on my intent. I'm gonna instantiate this variable right here, going. Uh, with step over because I don't want to get lost into the constructor of that object, right? I don't need to know um, how the how uh, the, the the Google uh, programmer uh, what the Google programmer uh, put into this object. I just need to know that uh, an intent needs an application context and the name of the class I'm targeting to open and the name of the activity I'm targeting to open that activity. So I'm going to step over and start activity. Well, it says what it does. It starts the activity that's pointed by, um, that's declared within the intent that it received as a, as a parameter. So if I go step over, um, is it pretty? Okay, so I need to uh, step over all the hundred code again. And this can be long sometimes because there's a lot of uh, underlying code. I think we should be okay. And there you go, result here. So it's pretty easy, as you can see, to... Um, to uh, start a uh, second activity from a previous one, right? Now, um, I want to send, I want to send information to that second activity. So that information is coming from where? That information is coming from the text uh, box that's right here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to create my intent, but then in a um, string, this is Java, so string is with a capital S. So string, uh, let's call it val, equals, um, this takes the, oh, sorry, uh, takes the, Uh, get text uh, to string, right? This is a common mistake that people do. They just stop at get text, but get text returns an editable, which is not a string. It's something that's editable. So you have to convert it to 
a string. So I have the string that I want to send, and then an intent, I said it, it's like an envelope, right? When you write a letter, you have to put some stuff on the cover of the envelope, but you are also able to put things within it, within the envelope. And this is how we do it. I dot I, which is my intent, dot put extra. So I want to put extra stuff in my envelope, uh, extra from the application context and the um, the activity I'm targeting. So um, when you put an extra, oops, this is not what I wanted, that put extra, you need to provide a key. That key is the key that's, that's, that will enable you to retrieve that information in the second activity. So let's call it, um, let's see, my message, right? And then I need to associate a value with that key. What's the value? It's the string that I just pick up for my user interface. So I've just uh, added some information in my envelope. And that envelope is passed as a parameter to uh, the start activity function, which um, asks the, the operating system for this resource right here. So the resource is going to be called. Um, so let's go in our second activity. When an activity is called, the first thing that's uh, the first thing that's called actually is the uncreate method. So uh, if I want to display whatever I receive uh, in the user interface of this activity, I need reference to the visual component of that activity. So again, I'm going to have a private, private, um, text view. View. Let's call it LBL. And I don't remember what I put as an ID here. LBL val. Okay, so let me just copy it. Um, so right here, let me go. This dot LBL equal text view find view by id r dot id dot 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 i said lbl though. so i have a reference okay perfect so that's gonna come in handy in a few seconds so um when every act when any activity it is launched it's actually launched by the OS, right? So the OS uses an intent to launch the activity. Um, which intent in our in our scenario? The intent that we sent right here. So the first thing I want to do when starting my second activity is um, basically get the hold of the intent that was sent to me. So this is how we do it. Um, bundle, bundle, let's call it, um, I don't know, my info equals get intent. Get intent is a method that we inherit from our parent, right? Get intent that get extra. So um, when uh, when um, a main activity is launched, such as uh, the main activity that we had here, well, it's not a second activity that launched this activity right here. It's the OS that launched the activity because we, we pressed on the uh, activity icon uh, on our phone. So an intent was sent from the OS to our main activity, but that intent had no extra. In this case, an intent, still the mechanism through which the activity is launched, but that, 
that intent could have extra in it. So this variable here, before we try to search in it to get extra, to get the information that we sent, uh, the string that we sent, well, let me make sure that it's not empty, that it's not null. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do if my info is different from null, sorry, from null. So I'm making, I'm making sure I have extra before I try to uh, uh, recuperate whatever uh, is in that uh, variable. So if my application, if my info is not null, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this dot LBL dot set text equals, sorry, set text. And what text do I want to set? The text that's hidden in there. Where in there? In an extra called my message. So let's try to get back that information. Um, I'm right here. So my info dot get by it, get char, get char array, get short, get in. So we have put string, uh, uh, like we can put in extras uh, all the primitive uh, data types. So integers, double, uh, strings, uh, uh, boolean. So we have methods to get back that. I'm going to go with um, get string. Everybody can still hear me properly? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. yeah okay. Now, yes. Yes. Okay. So, which part did you miss? The last part uh, when in the get my info doc get. Get, get string. Okay. String. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, what I was saying is here, uh, let me do another one. I dot, uh, you see, uh, put extra has a mini version, right? I always have to give a key as a string, but then I can pass as a value an integer, a byte, a char, a long, a float, all the, all the sample data types, right? So because I can send many different sample data types, when I want to get, uh, to recuperate that information, I also have many different functions. I have get string, get integer, get float, get char, get char array, and so on and so forth. It's clear? Yes. Okay. So let's try launching this application right now. Um, so basically, what should happen when I press on the button? I should um, get the text that's in the user interface put it into our intent, send the intent to the OS. The OS should recognize that we're asking for the test activity, should launch the test activity. The test activity should uh, get the intent sent by the operating system. Within that intent, sorry, yeah, within that uh, uh, intent, um, uh, if it has extra, Right. If it's not null, it has extra. Well, we can then search for the specific extra we're looking for and display that value in our uh, text view. So this is what should happen. So I'm going to use it in uh, launch it in normal mode. Because by now I think you got uh, how to use breakpoint and the um, the uh, debug window. So yeah, the application is launched. So let's go here. Um, 
uh, it should work, all right? So send, and right here, it should work. It's a bit small. Actually, let me do this. I think you guys are going to be able to see better if I do this. So everybody is convinced it works. Good? Good. Yeah, okay. good. So let me do that again. But this time by using breakpoint and the what is called uh, a watch window because it's for You also want to be able to inspect whatever is happening in your variables. So I'm going to go back in the main activity right here. And yeah, so let's launch, but in debug mode right now. OK, OK, so test send perfect you see i'm stuck right here right so i'm gonna step but look here at uh, in variables uh every time a variable is created or instantiated or updated well i can see its content right here in the variable window so i'm gonna step through line 28 perfect and now let's see what happened with uh well take stay right here it's my uh my um edit text if i explode it i'll see all the different attributes of that variable with uh its properties right and if i go down far enough i sh should even see you see right here, test two, which is the text that I put in the user interface. But right now, my uh, va my variable val two, I don't see it right here. Why? Because it's a local variable. It hasn't been created yet. It's gonna be created after the execution of line 29. But right now I am on line 29. So look at this, boom. I have val now, which is this variable right here. Test two. You see why breakpoints and watch window, which is what it, what this is called, uh, are so important to enable you to debug an application. Everybody sees the importance of this. Mm. Yes. No. Maybe. No. 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 Okay. No. No. So Fantastic. if you write if you write a pro a program that's supposed to uh, do financial calculation, right? So mm -hmm. you input values, you press calculate, and you get the wrong answer all the time because you double checked it on your calculator. How are you supposed to know where in your code you made uh, you 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 um, you didn't translate the mathematical equation correctly? It's impossible if you don't if you're not able to step through your code line by line and verify in each variable what information is put in it. That's why debugging with breakpoints and watch window are so important. It's clear now? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, so now Val, which is right here, which is how actually I see it right here. Val has Test two has a string in it, but I can also see it here. So I'm gonna step over because I don't want to see what's happening in the put extra method. I don't want to see what's happening in the start activity method. So, and then I'm gonna step over a lot because there's a lot of code that's called uh, behind the scene for me. Should be okay. There you go, test two right here. So that's how you can send, um, I call them primitive data types. So basic data types, uh, uh, float, double, integers, uh, string, boolean. What if I have lots and lots of information to send? Let's say um, all the information of a student, for example. 
uh, let's say a student is qualified by 20 information. I'm not going to write this 20 times, changing the key. Let's say I have a, um, a key that's name with the name of the student right here. Then on another, on another line, I have another key that's age with the age of the student. Another line, I have a key that's uh, address with it's too long. What if I could get from my user interface uh, the student information, put those information in an object, in a Java object, in a Java class, and then in my extra, instead of sending one information at a time, what if I could send the object and then get that object in my second activity and uh, and displays information? So that's the last thing, that's the second thing I want to demonstrate today. It's okay so far? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so actually, I, uh, I'm going to do that second part uh, of the demo. Then um, I'm going to stop there to give you guys a chance to go over that new material, but also make myself available to uh, answer some uh, support question about your labs. Good? Yeah, it's good. Thank okay. you. Okay. So let me just uh, let me first create a new class. So again, I'm going to go uh, on my project package new. Instead of choosing a new activity, I'm going to choose a new Java class, right? Okay. And um, uh, th the name of my class, let's go with student, for example, the student class. So here's my student class, and you guys are lucky. A class in Java is pretty much the same with little differences with a class in C Sharp, right? So we'll get back to a uh, more advanced syntax, but for today, I'm just going to use Android Studio to generate um, code and then compare that code with C Sharp code, right? Because I, I want to. Uh, uh, um, I want to have time to give you guys support. So just like in C-sharp, um, we have uh, what's called the access modifier. So public, private, and protected, which I think you guys saw in C-sharp, right? Yes, no. Like in C sharp, if you put public before variable or private or or protected or before a function, you know what effect it has, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yes. So I'm perfect. So I'm just gonna create a couple of uh, attributes here for us for our student. So private uh, name. Oops. Private string name. Private string um, surname and let's go with let's go with um, private int h right so um, from there I could create and I will create a constructor uh, and then some uh, properties, right? In C Sharp, the properties were these uh, type of public function that enabled us to get or set a private attribute. You guys remember that? Yes, I remember. Okay. That, so, sorry, Fernand. Yes. What, what is the difference? I know it's private and public, but what is the difference to private and protected? Okay. So, when you declare something as private, the outside world, mm -hmm. outside world being whatever piece of code is trying to use a variable of type student, um, the outside world doesn't see a private attribute or a private function, right? Okay. Okay. Um, and if you inherit from student class, to do, I don't know, a foreign student class, for example, the foreign student class, same thing, won't be able to manipulate the private attribute of its parent unless you have properties. If you put protected, well, for the outside world, it ex it's exactly the same as, as, it, as if it was private. But mm. for the child that Henry writ, that, yeah. that 
Yes, that Henry, it as though it was public, it has unlimited and direct access. Ah, OK, perfect. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes, good. Perfect. Thanks. So um, I could create a constructor. Actually, I'm going to create one constructor here and then I'm going to have uh, Android uh, Studio generate the rest just to say that constructor in Java and in C sharp are, are the same. So public no return type because if I call the constructor of the student class, well, it's because I want a student to be returned. So I don't have to specify the return type. So I'm just putting the name and the constructor uh, in Java, just like in C sharp, is the same name as the name of your class. And this is my default constructor. So in it, I want to give default values for all my attributes. Let's say zero um, this that uh, name equals non applicable and this that um, surname equals again not applicable. Um, so right now I could create an object of type student, student, but I would be stuck with this value right here because my attributes are private. I wouldn't be able to modify them. I need getters and setters, right? So in C sharp, in C sharp properties were were um, implemented in in one block. In a property, you would have the get block and the set block. In Java, it's done in two separate public uh, function. Let me just generate the code and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. If I see say generate, I could have generated the constructor from the attribute right here or just the getter, just the setter. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go setters right? and I'm going to choose to generate setters for all private attributes. Look at this. So automatically it did everything for me. This also works in C Sharp, by the way, in Visual Studio. Um, I could do the same thing for the constructor. I have a default constructor right here, but if I wanted to, look at this, generate, let's say constructor. Uh, let's say I want a constructor just with the name or with the name and the age. Oops, let's say the name and the age. Okay, there you go. It's done for me. So for uh, for a redundant task like this, well, we can just generate the code and then go in it and tweak. So that's okay for everybody. Like it's not that that different from C sharp, right? Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So um, for this class to be able to be sent through an intent to another activity, um, I can't leave it just like that. It has to um, implement a specific interface. So I think you guys saw inheritance, how to create a parent class, but did you uh, talk this summer about how to implement an interface? Probably not. So, um, uh, like I said, we'll come back on object-oriented principle, but um, to enable a class like this to be sent through an intent to another activity, it needs to, and just follow me here, to implement, we'll see what that means um, in the coming class, to implement a specific interface, an interface that's called C realizable serializing an object means taking it and converting it into a stream of byte basically that's what it means okay so you need to implement the series i have difficulty saying i always had difficulty saying this you need to implement the serializable interface on a class of your own design and that class needs to have getters and setters 
for every single one of its attributes for that class to be able to send through an intent to another activity. So that's the rule. Now that I have this class, let me use it. So in my main activity now, um, so let's uh, let's ignore the the um, you know what? Let's use uh, our our. Um, Let's use our user interface to get the name of the object, but it, let's fix its uh, its age in the code. Okay, so actually, let me be more brilliant than this. Okay, look. At that. So what I'm gonna do in my user interface, I'm gonna write the name uh, slash the age, right? And then I'm going to be able to split them into two different information. So I'll have the name, the age, and I'll be able to use this version of my constructor, right? So I don't have to modify my user interface. So let's go like this. Um, uh, let's, okay, let's keep the name Val, but then I'm going to do this. Um, which is going to be an array. Let's call it um, info equal val dot split. See, so um, split enables you to split a string according to a specific uh, character, right? Um, and is it a good idea for this demo? Um, split. Yeah, let's do that. Split. I'm going to split on the comma, actually. So let's go like this on the comma. So now, uh, if my intention is to write the name, comma, the age, well, in the first slot of uh, this uh, array, I'm going to have uh, in the index zero of the array, I'm going to have the name and in the index one of the array, I'm going to have the the age. Everybody's understanding what's happening. The split function is also available in JavaScript. It's also available in C Sharp. Actually, it's available in most object oriented uh, languages and it's a means uh, it's a mean to split a string uh, according to a, a specific uh, uh, character. That's okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I'm doing this just because if not, I would have to uh, modify my user interface, add another text box, you know, one for the name, another one for the uh, for the uh, for the age. Uh, I would have needed to add another variable here to add some code here. Uh, and it's not necessary if I can just if I know that I'm going to enter the information in this format and we split, I'm going to be able to get this separate from this. Okay, so that's the that's the idea right here. So let me go with um, so so then the string uh, name is gonna be info zero, and then the integer age is going to be um, sorry, integer that parse um, parse exactly there you go and what I need here is info here one. So these are string that I'm putting in the user interface split um, at the comma. So I get the name, but here 
it's a string representing the age, so I need to convert it into a, uh, an integer. Why? Because I'm going to use this information to do what? To create a student, uh, let's call it uh, S1 equals new student, and the student has um, two different constructor, right? One with no parameter, the default one, and one with the name and age. So I'm going to put here name, and I'm going to put here age. There is my object. And then in my extra, well, my message is now just going to be S1. And you see, there is no error because because the student class, the student class implements the serializable interface, I'm able to send it through an intent. So now I need to modify a bit the code on this side. Um, I'm not I'm not receiving simple extras anymore. I'm not receiving um, a primitive data type. I'm actually and let me put this. Uh, in comments so you can compare what was there and what's there and what's going to be. Um, and now I'm getting a, I'm actually getting a, a student. Let's call it S2 equals. Um, so get intent dot get you have extra but then you got um get serializable extra right because that's what we did we serialized an object and again i'm looking for the key because i didn't i didn't change my key so my info variable here is not uh, is not needed anymore is s2 though i can make sure s2 is not empty and if s2 is not empty look at my code now s2 dot look at this i have all my getters so i can just uh, you know what let's let me take the name and concatenate with the s2 dot the surname. There you go. And then finish with S2 that uh, the age, but the age is an integer, right? And this, sorry, and this uh, set text is supposed to uh, get a string. So I'm going to go with a set age dot. Oh yeah, can't do that. Okay, I'm just gonna do um, string dot value of which receive an integer and returns a string value of. There you go. And if everything goes well, let me launch the application. Oh, there's a there's an error somewhere. Okay. 917. Uh, 17. Ah, oh, thank you. My, uh, oops. There you go. Uh, ta ta ta. Kids rebel extra. Okay, give me a second. Ah, okay. It's my mistake. I need to cast this into a student. See, the compiler is your friend. It always tells you what's wrong if you uh, listen carefully. So let's launch this app. Actually, we already have a, a good idea of what's going to happen, but uh, you know what? Let me stop it and put my breakpoints so we see from the start what's what's happening here. So the breakpoints are there. Um, I'm going to put breakpoints here also, and let's launch it. Okay, so 
let's go um, Fernand, comma, or Fernando, whatever, <laughs> comma, let's say 36, let's send, okay. So, um, step over this, step over this. So I have my Fernando and 36 right here. So everything so good so far, and I have it here also. So let's see if I'm really able to split with the comma, with the comma. Okay, so, so far, look what happens. So I have Fernando in the index zero of my uh, array, and then 36 in the index one of my array. And you see that 36 is a string, and I can also see it here. Look, um, this is the uh, info, and you see index zero and index one. So name is going to be charged with Fernando right now. And then age is going to be ch uh, charged with 36 before because I take the string 36 and parse it. It's the same thing as uh, you did in C sharp, convert to integer. See? So let's do it. Perfect, so I have 36. Now, my student right now, which is uh, null for now, is gonna be, actually, let's let's step into. You see what constructor is called? And then there you go, there you go, there you go. So my student now, if I go down, you have S1 right here, which has uh, his name, is age and I have a default value for surname because the constructor that was called didn't give default value for their surname. So now uh, um, let's put that student into the extra. I'm gonna step over, step over, like I did before, step over a couple of times. Okay, before it sends me to the second activity. Actually, I think there's a there's a continue run to cursor. OK, so what I'm going to do, go in test activity, put my cursor right here and say run to cursor. Bingo. So that that uh, that's a good trick. So you don't have to keep on pressing uh, step over uh, uh, for the end of time. So right now I'm going to step over again and student two. Look at student two. There you go. I have all my information right here. I get a reference uh, to my label. The student is not null. We just proved that. And let's display the information in the user interface. Again, uh, well, here I have no choice. I just have to press until uh, um, all the backend code uh, that's uh, generated for me executes. So let's go. And let me um, zoom again with snippet. There you go. So Fernando, um, null, null here, which is the, um, sorry, the uh, surname that we didn't uh, pick up, but I still, that's my mistake, I still, put it here in my code. That's where I have a, a null here in the print screen and then the age. So that's it. We just saw how it is easy, I think, to uh, to uh, launch uh, an activity using an intent with get context application and the name of the activity dot class and with the method start activity. If you want, on top of launching the second activity, if you want to pass it information, you can use um, extras, right? So it's your intent. It's your intent dot put extra. You give a key and then you give a value. That value can be a primitive data type or an object. If it is an object, the object has to 
implement the serializable, the serializable interface, and we'll come back on that uh, probably uh, next class uh, or next week. And then to uh, to um, um, get that object in the second activity, well, it's either get and then the get extra in a bundle type variable if the primitive variable and if it's an object it's get intent that get serializable extra with the key uh, you're looking for because i could put many different serialized object in an intent just like i could put many different uh, primitive data type uh, in uh, in uh, an intent don't forget to cast uh, and I did forget myself. And once you have that object or that bundle, while well, you saw you can do pretty much uh, whatever you want with it. So what you could do actually, what we added today, uh, our, our lab, the lab that we did. Uh, let me go on Teams. Uh, I Because I know that some of you are done or almost done. Some of you are, are still fighting with it. If I go in our team, team right here, the lab, um, let me open it. Sorry, it's taking a few seconds. Let me zoom a bit on it. Let's see here. So what you could do to practice, actually what I just showed you today is this part here, your um, revenue could be in one activity, right? And this part here, your debt or your expenses could be in a second activity. So in the first activity, you could get this, this, and this information, right? Um, and show your total revenue in the same activity, but all this information could be put in an object. The object through an intent could be sent to a second activity. And in the second activity, you could get the rest of it of the information and uh, basically do the calculation, do the ratio of the sum of uh, this field with the sum of whatever it is is uh, within the object that you received through the intent, and then display the final resource uh, result in the uh, in the second activity. Um, I. Uh, run out of time because I want to stop talking and give you time for for support. But the last thing I wanted to show, I'm probably going to do it either Wednesday morning or in a in a short video that that I'll post. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show is to how to send information to a second activity and have the second activity do calculation and send the result back to the first activity. But I'll guess we'll we'll get back to uh, to that. So this is not a, an official exercise. It's just something I should you should try uh, to do to make sure you understood properly what I tried to uh, to um, demonstrate today. Well, obviously, after you go over the the the, the video of the uh, of today class, is it okay for everyone? Yes, I'm okay. Yes, good. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop uh, the the.